Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. This time, it's another week in review. Actually, two weeks in review this time. We'll look at some interesting product news, including full nav Dynamics 365 for financials announcement, the GP roadmap, news from the Dynamics 365 technical conference, Extreme 365 in Lisbon, and the Adobe Summit 2017, where Microsoft and Adobe burst out with customer engagement offerings and more. Joining me to chat about the week in the news is Dan Morneau, assistant editor. Dan, welcome. And uh, what do we have first? Well, let's start off with some Microsoft product news and roadmaps. First off, we have Microsoft to give Dynamics 365 for financials the full NAV treatment. And Jason, you wrote this one. So this was probably the most recent news since we are doing the podcast today, and that was an announcement that came out of an event in Thailand, the Directions Asia event, the inaugural Directions Asia event, I guess, a partner-run event focused on NAV, and Microsoft was there. They updated the attendees, about, uh, as I understand, 300 to 350 of them, that the plan for Dynamics 365 for financials is to turn it into quote-unquote full NAV. Now, that doesn't mean that it will be an identical product online and offline as, you know, to a larger extent, you might say that the CRM online has become that, but it will actually have the same code base and virtually all the same capabilities. That's a big change from today where the, obviously the Dynamics 365 for financials is a very stripped down and as partners have told us, really pretty limited in terms of who it can serve today. So obviously they're looking to broaden that quite a bit. Great. Next up we have Microsoft Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement Roadmap Prioritizes Integration, Strategic Use of Azure Services. Yeah, so this was, I think, the headline coming out of the Extreme 365 Lisbon event from last week, and and that was something I, I was at personally, so I did write this one, and that was my take on the big news of the event from Microsoft. So Microsoft was there, and they gave a roadmap update to, again, a, a partner audience of primarily dynamic CRM, Dynamics 365 customer engagement app audience, and those were the two real standouts. Obviously, there's a, a huge amount of sort of like a lot, you know, some of these keynotes from from the CRM team get the sort of the feeling of a laundry list because there's often so many different areas of the product where there's new features, new integrations, new partnerships. And there were several of those. I think we'll touch on a few later. But the things I took away from it were the sort of earnestness with which Microsoft stated that it wants to make the Dynamics 365 CRM apps better integrated into the rest of the world with, I think, more powerful, more sort of easy to deploy integration approaches and the level to which they plan to make Azure services, especially the Cortana intelligence suite, a component of what they bring to bear with customers and how they differentiate themselves compared to Salesforce. Obviously, uh, so it's it's a competitive move and it's also, I think, a just a strategic direction that, that the company is, is looking at. And I think with the, I guess the only other thing I'd add is with integration, obviously the other big component there there is common data service. And again, I think that'll pop up as we talk a little more here too. But common data service is something that's sort of being developed in parallel to Dynamics 365. And you know that Microsoft, I didn't know if we'd hear much about it, but they made a point to say that they're committed to the common data service. There's a, we had a separate article on that here. How soon will, will CDS have a real impact? And I think the answer to that question is as soon as Microsoft reasonably can get it done, they're, they're prioritizing that from what they told people. And you know I think they want to bring that to bear across Dynamics 365, both the enterprise and the business edition. You know, I, th- I think it's today, I think there's a, maybe a few customers sort of testing it out. And I think R&D has some working examples, but I believe, especially on the enterprise side, we'll see CDS playing a larger role in the not too distant future. And that's actually a nice segue into the next piece, which was a report from the Dynamics 365 Technical Conference by Greg Williams of Western Computer. What's trending at Dynamics 365 Tech Conference? CDS, then the rest. Yeah, that was a nice headline. And you know, I... I'll, I, maybe I'll, I'll get your feedback on this one, but I saw that and I said, oh, good. So there's a real nice consistency between two different sort of parallel events that were running at different, t- in different, you know, 12,000 miles apart or 10,000 miles apart or something like that, you know, where the CRM focused team was talking about CDS and the AX team was talking about CDS. <laughs> That's got to be a good sign. Indeed. And, and it does one thing that 
Microsoft gets cheated a lot for your messaging isn't fast enough, your messaging isn't mm -hmm. clear enough, but their messaging is, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd give them demerits for that so much lately. It seems to me their messaging is really consistent. This is a tighter running ship. Yeah, it has been possible in the past. The teams don't talk, but they do now, I believe. Well, to an extent. I mean, there was also some signals. I think I covered this in my piece about CDS that there's still teams that don't talk <laughs> in the, in uh, in the Dynamics 365 ecosystem, or you know, in the in the, the larger sort of organization there that's in the cloud and enterprise group. I think that really is still showing on the business edition side. There's a. I got you know I, I listened it in on one you know pro, Dynamics 365 business edition financials product manager or it might have been a program manager I'm, I'm actually not totally sure but you know he was talking to partners about their integration needs between the business edition CRM and ERP you know apps and he was really from the nav side of the world and he did not really represent the CRM apps he did not represent the people talking about. It. As as it related to doing an integration between the two parties, or between the two apps, you know, the CRM side and the and the NAV financial side, he was from the financial side, and you know, questions about how the integration would work was really sort of too. It did sort of feel it still still felt like he had his responsibility to get it over the wall to the CRM side, and what they were doing was sort of their business. He didn't have a great visibility onto them. I don't think they have great visibility into financials. So there's still you know, and and I think the. The end story is, well, CDS will hopefully solve some of those issues because it is common and it will sort of bring an end to some of those disputes or some of those points of confusion over the long term, but not right now. Okay. Okay. Next up, and this was a bit of a surprise, Microsoft and Adobe announce availability of joint solutions for customer engagement and new semantic model initiative. Uh, you wrote this one. Uh, yeah. So I think there was a... Uh, you know, I went from the, the extreme Lisbon event where there was a roadmap, a couple of roadmap presentations, but almost no mention of Adobe, which left people sort of scratching their heads since, you know, marketing automation is a big key topic for CRM consultants. And then the next week we got the announcement at the Adobe event. Now, I, obviously, I just, I think that makes sense in this, in terms of, you know, it was Adobe's event and they wanted to make the, the announcement about the partnership. It's a, obviously a much larger event than the extreme event, much uh, better visibility with analysts and the press. So, you know, I certainly can understand that. And yeah, I think to your point, the uh, the announcement showed more progress than maybe some people were expecting. And I think it included more things than people were expecting. And that, that semantic model stuff, I had an interesting chat with some other folks who were watching that. And uh, not, not a whole lot is known about it. I mean, Microsoft didn't really write anything that I've seen yet about what they really are planning there. The biggest question, does it really uh, match up with common data service? I think my conclusion was, well, it has to, right? I mean, it can't. If they, if they were doing a common semantic model and they didn't bring common data service to bear on that, from the, at least for their side of it, uh, that would be a real head scratcher. Yeah, indeed. Matter of fact, on the keynote on Tuesday, and we covered Scott Guthrie, took the stage for really all of about 10 minutes to uh, sort of describe the Microsoft and Adobe partnership. And he did talk about this common data schema. And later in the week, uh, I spoke to Paul Greenberg, who's uh, mm -hmm. the customer relationship guru who uh, wrote CRM at the speed of light. And he was at the conference and he confirmed for me with Jim Rivera, who I guess is Adobe's uh, senior product manager of the new marketing platform, that this is a real thing, the schema. It's in the works, very much in development, and we can expect to see at Build in May, uh, Microsoft Build in May, some real product, some real uh, uh, something that has evolved. So this is, and that's something that Greenberg remarked, was all these sort of customer uh, experience applications are, he said, these are not visions, these are not vaporware, these are a real working product that, mm -hmm. uh, that again, the two partners who have been quiet about this sort of, uh, sort of burst onto the scene with. He did say, Greenberg did say that once again, and we've seen this in the past, it could have used more messaging. You know, you are... Mm -hmm coming into uh, what he called a fierce environment or a fierce competitive environment. This can't have messaging enough, really. But I guess, you know, now that it, but the two sides were very cautious about having 
real working product mm. before they uh, before they even opened their mouths, I guess, which is uh, the theory. Yeah, yeah, it's not, and, and that was really great that you were able to to get a chance to talk with with Paul. I think if anyone's going to give perspective on a relationship between two major players in in the you know marketing and and um, and CRM spaces respectively, I think. Paul is really uh, in a unique position to assess that and probably has seen more than almost anybody else has seen from the companies in terms of what they're willing to share so far. So that's really great. I mean, and, and the other thought I have is, you know, I was talking about CDS from Microsoft's side. I think partners are looking for, they, they, they're going to want all the information they can get, especially if you're a dynamic CRM 365 partner. You want to know what you're able to promise, you know, in, uh, on your next sales call about marketing capabilities, because right now it's just a blank space and you fill it in yourself with, you know, your preferred marketing automation option. So, you know, we'll just give them something to pitch and what kind of client, what kind of prospect. And, you know, will this sort of overhaul any elements of the common data service, for example? Uh, it very well could. It could improve it. It could change it. Uh, or, you know, I, I could be totally wrong and it's just totally unrelated. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But, uh, but yeah, good to see the, uh, good to see the, I guess, a partnership that, that can move forward swiftly. And I think that, again, people will sort of measure how well Scott Guthrie's team is able to make that a reality with the dynamics, uh, in the context of Dynamics 365. Yeah, and strategically, uh, something that Greenberg pointed out to us was that uh, Adobe does everything Microsoft doesn't. So all the has the if there has been you know for partners this gap of boy I really don't have anything credible to offer in the customer experience I really don't have anything credible to compete with the sales forces and SAP and Oracle's offerings and here you go and the other thing too is that uh, Adobe brings with it of course a very powerful B two C pedigree but uh, right. an underrated B two B one so that. It is. This is really going to be the enterprise marketing solution for Microsoft, as opposed to what what little offerings it's had in the past. They really have come at the uh, at the enterprise software space in a much different direction than Microsoft has. And you sort of look at the. It's very much you see very much the agencies and the creatives who have who are sort of the uh, the backbone of their sort of support. Or their client base, it seems like. Whereas, you know, you get the, you know, the IT consulting and IT departments who are really the clients of the of Microsoft to a large extent, right? The developers, the, you know, IT managers, the data center people who are typically deeply invested in Microsoft. So they really are coming at this from very different angles. And it will be interesting to see how, you know, the world's kind of come together for success when it comes to actually selling solutions. It appears to be a nice marriage. It does appear to be, uh, you know, a very, uh, a very good match for both sides. Next up, we have Microsoft updates Dynamics GP 2018 plans, stretches roadmap to 2019, and this was by you as well, Jason. Yeah, so I think this was the is this the final event we're going to cover today. But there was the GPUG Amplify event. Uh, we had a podcast with its host, with one of its organizers, Bob McAdam, a little while back. And Microsoft offered up a roadmap update on GP 2018. I didn't expect that they were actually going to do that, but they did. So they had an you know, updated roadmap, which uh, really just defines that they do have versions planned through 2019 right now. And they just offered some more details on the release themes for GP 2018, which I didn't get a briefing on this, but my best take on it is that they are just really, you know, continuing to evolve some of the key, some of the core areas where they want to, you know, grow the product. And, and a lot of it, my take was it's a, a lot of it's incremental. So more workflow enhancement, improvements to document attach, which was their sort of next gen document management capability that ties into a bunch of different functional areas of the product. And then I think the other thing that's notable is, you know, that they are growing their use of Power BI, Power Apps, Flow, making it easier to bring those back together with GP data, which is something I think they absolutely must do if they want to stay relevant in the Dynamics uh, cloud and the cloud and enterprise group. So, you know, I think a nice mix, uh, you know, uh, the sense is that the GP team is really running on a very, very light, lightly resourced uh, R&D group at this point. And, you know, I think it was a nice, well-rounded set of plans for GP 2018. I, you know, if I was going to offer one critique, I always wonder why they keep that sort of top features requested by customers as sort of the plan for the roadmap. I think that makes it sound a little 
a little too insular, you know, like they're really just sort of playing to their existing customer base rather than going after market share. But, you know, maybe that's a nitpick. I think there, you know, there are other things on there for sure, but that's really where the roadmap, that's all that's in the roadmap for beyond the GP 2018 release, which is planned for later this year. Yeah, interesting when you ask people what they want, there's that famous quote from Henry Ford, if I gave people what they wanted, they'd have designed a faster horse. No, no, <laughs> you're the innovator. Surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they have a very loyal customer based on the on the flip side. So, you know, they do want to keep uh, that GP base happy and they, and they want to listen to their partners too, I think. Absolutely. Last up in Microsoft product news, Microsoft rolls out Sales Navigator Enterprise Edition with CRM Sync and Team features. Right. So this was the latest update to Sales Navigator. This came out of the sort of LinkedIn side of things. Uh, one of the curious elements there was we have new CRM sync and Salesforce is the first to get it. That was very surprising to me. And it, it kind of didn't, it was a little, you know, what's the term? It, it kind of clashed with the message that we got at, that I heard at Extreme 365, uh, which was, you know, pl- very specific plans for making Sales Navigator integrate with Dynamics 365 specifically. But, you know, I think that what I took there as well, you know, the Sales Navigator team really is just another R&D group or you know, product management group that, that's working on its own, doing its thing, and sort of working its existing relationships in Salesforce is, is probably a top one. So, you know, they've got they've got that Enterprise Edition level, and uh, and they're just rolling out a whole uh, whole slew of, not, of new, uh, new capabilities there. Great, great. Let's move on to some partner and ISV news. We've got a couple of stories this week. Jason, did you want to summarize or you want me to read these titles? Yeah. So, I mean, there were a couple stories the last week that really follow up on, I guess you'd say, existing sort of partnerships or OEM agreements with the Dynamics 365 team. So one was Versi and Predict. The other was CAF AX. And, and both of those are offering up their integrations with the 365 customer experience apps. Versi and Predict. Uh, can integrate now with CRM and allow basically, you know, and they took some partners through demos that I was able to see, you know, the ability to sort of feed in a list of successful leads and unsuccessful leads from, from different campaigns and their own sort of machine learning engine takes those campaigns and, and learns, looks up sort of the qualities of why some of them won, some of them lost, and builds a predictive model. And I'm probably oversimplifying it, but it's a pretty interesting service. You, you sort of pay for that service, and then you get predictions on future leads. And, and then what they can also do, which is maybe their killer app that they got people's attention, is they can then give you in the sales department sort of a list of sort of new leads, people you never met before, you've never had any contact with, who you can then in some way, you know, go out and sort of cold call because Versium believes that they match the same criteria of leads you you have won with in the past. You know, they rate each one and they score each one the likelihood of it being successful. And, you know, so obviously you can find that top 10%, the 90 to 100% likelihood of closing and obviously prioritize those first, whether they're already in your list or whether you're buying, you're getting them separately. Anyway, so that's Versium Predict and then Cafe X launch of Live Assist for Dynamics 365 is, you know, something that came out after a year of planning. It was announced about six months ago, but Microsoft and CAFEX had already been working together. They offer, you know, this this uh, multi-channel chat and video and co-browse set of capabilities for service agents and sales agents. It's a pretty nice solution and it's something that, you know, really fills in a gap that Microsoft badly needs to fill in since they're not going forward with Paratur anymore. And, you know, with Paratur's, you know, uh, knowledge management capabilities and sort of customer service capabilities, portal kind of capabilities being handled elsewhere, that leaves that gap and CAFEX fills it very nicely, it seems. So that is coming to market now. It demos very well and it, it does seem to tie into dynamic CRM in, in nice ways. And they really stressed the the deep relationship between the two R&D departments to make this happen. So it, it might be a model for future partnerships as well, where there's a real a really close uh, interaction between the groups. Okay. Next up, we have a few expert opinion and guest editorial stories. The first up is from Petrus Boutanis, uh, CEO of Simpla Nova, and this is five considerations for evaluating a Microsoft Dynamics NAV upgrade. Petrus observes that, as is often the case, folks get comfortable and uh, they feel the solution is working well and they're busy, and so they get a couple of versions behind 
Well, what are the considerations for and barriers to upgrading? And uh, I think a lot of these aren't going to be surprises to anybody, but they're worth running through one-to-one or one-on-one. Like uh, one of the one of the main reasons for sticking with an old system is that it has meant downtime and disruption. Well, there comes a point at which you got to put a stick in the ground and say, "Yeah, but if we stay up to date, it's going to be a more uh, a smoother migration in the future." So. There comes a point where strategically you kind of have to say, from this point forward, we stay up to date. I'd say there's never been a better time to consider these factors and consider an an upgrade in in NAV. And we've we've done other podcasts where we've talked about this in depth. But with NAV 2017 now being pretty mature and firms like Simplanova and others that really have a lot of experience in, in getting people upgraded off of these legacy releases of NAV, I think you can believe that there's people with skills and with tooling to make this about as painless as it's ever going to get. And I think my guess is that more and more customers are going to do the calculations on that and realize that there's really a um, uh, the value of staying where they are and the, the idea that they're reducing risk by not moving is going to start to decline pretty soon. It becomes like driving your old car. Well, what's cheaper, fix this one or, <laughs> there you, go. you know, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, uh, one thing that always comes up is, well, we, you know, ours is a pretty, uh, pretty tailored elegant system of customizations and add-ons well your customizations are probably standard features now so very likely yeah there's always that yeah next up was microsoft dynamics ax training the opportunities and issues this was by don riggs who's the uh a senior ax applications architect and a uh kind of a freelance ax expert and this is a good rundown of where do you get AX knowledge? There's uh, And who, by the way, who needs it? What type of uh, people is it aimed at? You've got an awful lot of folks out there. You know, uh, Microsoft has pretty much done away with its manuals. It's got online options, but there are folks out there who, uh, who miss their manuals, who like to thumb them, who like to put post-it <laughs> notes in them, who right. like to write in the margins. And you've also got different levels of expertise you need. You've got end users, you've got... The real company experts, the subject matter expert, you know, the product owner, you got the consultant, you got the administrators. So what's available there? And he runs down, for example, e-learning, which is available on the Microsoft Customer Portal, which is pretty comprehensive and covers the uh, the AX body of knowledge. But this is kind of a self-paced type of thing, and that's that's always great. Manuals, we've got folks out there like Scott Hamilton writing great books because there is the need for it. There is still that void. There is certification training, but Don kind of speculates that, well, that proves one thing to people is that, you know, you can pass a test. It doesn't prove that you can implement seminars, workshops, boot camps. Uh, but Don is, uh, is in favor of customized client-specific training, something he doesn't touch upon is. Well, that's the most expensive, but it is certainly the most direct. It uses your data, uses the jobs of the people, you know, in-house. It's it's the ideal. So that's a good rundown by Don, I think. And next, yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah, he did, does. Uh, he understands Don himself is a uh, is a trainer in that field, I believe. And uh, next up was in our executive Q and A series. We had uh, Nick Manolis, president of True Commerce, talking about the B2B market pressures for unified commerce and a retail-like experience. This is, uh, as Nick describes, there is this pressure on enterprise from the B2C side. Why can't you do that? And then that's an excellent question. There are among the challenges kind of related to Dynamics customers is, once again, that pressure to offer this elegant customer experience. There's also sheer globalization. The Dynamics community is a task now to collaborate and communicate with trading partners at a global level. 
uh, as they have not done before. And finally, those same organizations that, uh, that manage ERP implementations and maintain ERPs are trying to determine how best and most cost effectively they can uh, extend the capabilities of their teams, but there's an awful lot of mechanics uh, behind, say, retail and wholesale distribution collaboration. In short, it needs to look easy to the to the customer, but it will not be easy behind the scenes without really elegant or integrated solutions. So I thought that was a good Great rundown by Nick, and Nick also went on to talk about... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to... And we'll be doing more uh, in this series of executive q and A's. so if you're if you're listening and you're an executive, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Maybe we can... Uh, Maybe we can talk to you as well. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, we switched them out, but uh, Monday we'll have uh, SBS Group, a and a with them. So, uh, so look forward to that on Monday. Next up is a series that we did of Summit EMEA speakers and their sessions. And uh, in each of these articles, we go into the session, who should attend, what you will learn. And I think these are great individual stories, too, whether or not you attend Summit EMEA uh, on these topics. We've got, among them, Dynamics AX for retail and the road ahead with Dynamics 365. We move on to Practical Power BI for analysis and reporting reporting in Dynamics Nav. And then finally, UK AXUG chair says learning value is the event focus. So these are, once again, great stories about the product and some real practical how-tos. Next up, we had a couple of Dynamics MVP profiles. These are folks who are new to the MVP ranks. The first was Canadian MVP Jason Cosman, who is a Dynamics CRM MVP. And after that was Australian CRM MVP Natraj Yegnararam. And uh, these are always a great read. We find out uh, how these folks participate in the community and more or less their rise to being a most valuable player, being most, uh, most important in the ecosystem. I always find those compelling. So next week, Jason, what have you got? Well, we have, uh, I'm looking at a piece on some of the CRM adoption and productivity tools that are out there and how they are sort of coming to the fore right now and their importance, Microsoft's attention to them, the channel's attention to them. I will also be looking ahead to the next event on the calendar after a busy uh, week or two here. We have a, a week break, I believe, and then uh, it's, as you mentioned before, Summit EMEA is kicking off in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty, uh, pretty compelling. And, and, yeah, and I would just add that Microsoft is, uh, is preparing for a presence there, you know, without, there's a whole nother conversation, but without their own event anymore related to Dynamics, the Microsoft team is sort of picking and choosing of where they're going to you know, make announcements and have a presence and sort of talk about the product line and launches and so forth. So uh, I think there's definitely going to be something to be, to be gleaned there and, and the extent we can get in touch with Microsoft Teams and, and learn about their plans. Uh, we'll be looking at that next week, too. Sure, sure. And uh, once again, I've got the uh, SBS uh, executive Q&A, and I think that'll be very compelling. So that's the one I'm looking forward to most. And uh, beside that, several, several things in the work. We'll see which gels. All right, excellent. Sounds good as always. So let's wrap up. has been the msdw podcast thank you so much for listening if you'd like to be on the podcast drop us a line i'm jason gumpert you can reach me by email at jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com and i'm dan morno assistant editor at d-m-a-u-r-n-o at msdynamicsworld.com thanks dan and until next time we are ms dynamics world signing off See the road is lost, get on my